My name is Terry Ellis. I'm an independent audio reviewer from the YouTube channel and website Pursuit to Perfect System. Elite Audio UK have asked me to take a look at some speakers that they are very excited to be offering to their customers, the Audio Physic Step 35. Audiophysic are a high-end speaker manufacturer based in Germany, and all of their speakers are manufactured in Germany. And they have been in business for over 35 years, which is really something. They have two product lines of speaker, the classic and reference lines, with the Step 35 being the only stand mount speaker in the reference line. And they are very compact stand mount speakers at a mere 175 millimeters wide, 320 millimeters tall, and 250 millimeters deep. Priced at £2,440, they have huge amounts of competition from lots of other very good stand mount speakers at all kinds of price points. So they need to stand out in order to justify that price tag. One way they definitely stand out is visually. Their cabinet shape is very different to the rectangular cabinet that we see with most other stand mount speakers around this price point. And the Step 35 have a teardrop type shape cabinet, which is very standout for a speaker at this kind of money. And their shape was hard to get on video because the paint finish is such high gloss. Again, very standout and obviously part of the premium you pay for them. Hopefully a top-down camera view will better show you their lovely form factor. An audio physic say their shape and slightly tilted back baffle are for performance reasons as much as aesthetic. And you can buy the Step 35 in black, white, and several different wood finishes. The second way a speaker can stand out from the crowd is with the technologies that are used or that are packed into it. And Audio Physic have definitely packed a lot of interesting technologies into the Step 35. And as a company, Audio Physic seem obsessed with controlling or minimizing unwanted vibrations within their speakers. And the Step 35 feature the HHCT, Hyper Holographic Cone Tweeter, in its third iteration. Audio Physic say it's a tweeter designed with controlling external vibrations very much in mind to leave just the sound of the tweeter. And visually, it's quite interesting to look at with that foam type ring surround, and the tweeter driver material seems transparent. And the Step 35 also feature a HHCM, Hyper Holographic Cone Midrange Driver, again in its third iteration, which Audio Physics say it's been designed with controlling unwanted vibrations from the cabinet in mind. But it also features several other technologies, such as the use of dual baskets to reduce resonance, ACD, or active cone damping to you guessed it, reduce unwanted resonance, and the driver material is ceramic coated aluminium. And if that wasn't enough, there are even more technologies packed into the Step 35 that are all listed and described on the Audiophysic website. So if you'd like to know more, I suggest you do some reading. One of those technologies that really stood out to me was the use of ceramic foam. Yes, I didn't know that was a real thing either. But by all accounts, it's extremely stable, even though it's 85% air. So Audio Physic use it in combination with an MDF outer cabinet material to give their cabinets more strength and rigidity without losing internal volume, meaning more from less, which is very clever. Another seemingly simple thing that stood out to me was the use of WBT speaker cable binding posts on the rear. And it's very nice to see WBT connections being used in a speaker at this price point. And you've guessed it, their integration into the speakers has had special care and attention to detail paid to reduce resonances too.
A long list of technical features sounds very impressive, excuse the pun. But what does any of that mean for sound quality? Well, I think it means that Audiophysic are designing their speakers with transparency in mind, to be as transparent sounding as possible. That's definitely something to bear in mind. And I also think with the Step 35, Audiophysic have designed them for audio files that have smaller listening rooms or for audio files that use a subwoofer or two, because I definitely think it is a speaker system that would really benefit from adding subwoofers. And the subwoofers that spring to mind are Rel's new TX range, either the T5, T7, or T9X, because you are definitely going to want a subwoofer that is fast, that doesn't overstay its welcome with the bass, and that's fast enough to keep up with the very fast sounding Step 35. I think the second important thing to consider will be careful hi-fi system component matching because my initial listening impressions of the Step 35 were yes, they are transparent sounding speakers, which means they are shining quite a bright spotlight on the hi-fi system that you put before them. And then I measured them as part of a full setup in my room and I could see that yeah, they do have a little bit of their own character, nothing sinister, but it is there. And at this point, I would say the best thing to do would be to speak to the team at Elite Audio UK because they'll be able to help you and advise you on the best hi-fi components to use with the Step 35 speakers to achieve the type of sound that you are looking for. Recently, I looked at two tube amplifiers for Elite Audio UK, the Octave V40 SE and the Manly Labs Stingray 2. And both would be fantastic choices with the Step 35. And I think amplifiers with a bit of heart, a bit of soul, and a bit of warmth would be where I would start my search. For sound quality, let's start with the big strengths of the Step 35. And the first one is Soundstage. And they present music with a very open feel to it. There is a lot of space in the soundstage and elements and layering within music are presented very precisely without sounding analytical or overly dry. They very cleverly create dimension or three dimension to music by at times having some music come forwards, other times it goes away from you and in some music it does both at the same time. By this I mean in some music, you know, vocals or the singer will come more forwards in the soundstage and then very clearly and well defined will be the layer in behind, maybe backing vocal singers behind and very clearly out to the sides, you get the idea. Vocals and intricate details within music are presented very clearly and they are easy to track, again, because there is this sense of openness all the time. And the Step 35 maintain their composure and very good timing regardless of the music complexity. Vocals, as I mentioned, sound very crisp and precise. And there is a quality and a resolution to how vocals are presented that definitely separates the Step 35 compared to some less expensive similar sized stand mount speakers. And the mid-range and treble and upper bass dynamics are also very impressive. I particularly like the treble from the Step 35 because it is a nice mixture of liveliness, smoothness and extension. And it's the extension that really makes a difference. It just adds that little bit extra to the sound stage in terms of dimensionality and ambience and just, yeah, just the, the sense of you being in a different type of space. But I did have to spend quite a bit of time playing around with the speakers towing to find the right balance of sound so that the treble wasn't just that little bit too present. Beyond that, I was very impressed by the tweeter's lack of stridency considering its lively character. Bass, however, is one of the areas where the Step 35 do come up a little short, hence the comments earlier about subwoofers. Not so much for quality, more for output and extension. The bass extension from the Step 35, I think will probably be very much in line with the expectations of most audiophiles for a stand mount speaker of this size. And in my room, the bass was rolling off around 55, maybe 50 Hertz, which is just not quite deep enough for all music. Some music it was absolutely fine, but in others it felt like it maybe rolled off a little bit too early. And I'm not just talking pipe organ music, I'm just talking general random music that I listen to. And they are also not big in bass outputs for the bass that they do deliver, which could be great for you in a smaller room or in certain situations. But in my room, I was pushing them reasonably hard for a bit more bass impact. And in some music, they sounded really quite punchy, but in the main, the bass was a little less impactful and less substantial than I personally like. 
And here is the thing, you can buy stand mount speakers of a similar size that can give you more bass outputs and more bass extension that cost less, if that is what you're looking for. And I just don't think that Audio Physics designed the Step 35 with big bass outputs in mind. They've designed them to be very precise sounding from top to their bottom. And they do sound very precise for their bass. It's articular and very on point, and the bass delivery definitely doesn't overstay its welcome. And I think that plays a big role in that sound stage, being so open sounding. And for some audiophiles, that will be how they like to listen to music. But this does affect how the speakers sound for tonality. And I would say overall, they have a pretty neutral sounding tonality. So that means if you're looking for a vocal that has you know, a bit more saturation, a bit more fullness or richness to it, well then that needs to come from the hi-fi system components that you put before the speakers. Hence my comments earlier in the video about important critical system matching. But I found the Step 35 quite easy to drive, which means you don't need masses of power from the amplifier. Hence my comments about you know, the tube amplifiers and how I felt they would work really well. I think to summarize this review, the Step 35 will undoubtedly appeal to a lot of audio files for their overall form factor, which is very lovely. And the ideas and technologies behind their design are very interesting and clever. And I think their sonic strengths will definitely appeal to a lot of audio files as well, with a little bit of careful system matching to get that sound that's right for you. And then the bass aspect, well, that will definitely be personal. I feel that they are speakers that would definitely benefit from a good subwoofer or two because I feel that would really help their sound, their overall sound delivery, to really grow up. And again, this is where it makes sense to speak to the team over at Elite Audio UK because they'll be able to help you, you know, demo and find out more about all of this. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope you found it useful and helpful. If you'd like to see more, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the Elite Audio UK YouTube channel. If you'd like to see more in-depth types of reviews, well then maybe come on over and see me at the Pursuit of Perfect System YouTube channel and look forward to seeing you there and again soon. Thanks for watching, take care, bye.